All right, so I'm sitting here with Sean Hundle, Canadian, literally professional soccer player out here in Canada, currently playing for Vancouver FC. How you doing, homie? Good, bro. Yeah, I appreciate you taking the time. Yeah. You, you've done some documentary stuff. You've been shooting the shit with us. Yeah. How you been? <laughs> good, bro. Good. Just getting ready for the game tomorrow. Getting ready for the you got a big game tomorrow out here. We're out here in Vancouver, by the way, if you guys don't know that already. Um, couple, There's a bunch of stuff I want to ask you. We'll yeah. keep it super short and simple. But the first thing I want to ask you is, you kind of know probably we run brown ballers. Mm -hmm. uh, to you, what does a brown baller mean? Like, what, is, what do those words mean to you? Any brown person striving to be something great in the sports industry. So, I yep. mean, a lot of guys out here right now in the basketball, they're, they're just here, you know, showing their talent and trying to make it to the next level. So, you know, it's yep. cool to see that. Yeah, that, that's like literally what it is. And obviously, as a byproduct of that, you're a brown baller for us, right? That's why it's so cool to be able to feature you, have you on the show, and have you part of what we're doing and building. Can you take us through a little bit of your journey? Because you've done a lot of stuff, Team Canada, Playing Vancouver, actually playing pro, pro aspiration to go to Europe. Yeah. When did you know soccer was going to be like your thing? Probably around like 14 years old when I got offered uh, my first professional contract. Uh, At 14? 14, I got offered it. I signed it when I was 15 and a half, I think. <laughs> what? Yeah. So I signed with Toronto FC at 15, played there for five years. Okay. Uh, went to Inter Miami for two years. Yeah. And then now I'm in Vancouver. So yeah, I'm just so trying, trying to do well this year and make go somewhere else. What goes through your mind being 14 and being offered like a pro contract? Honestly, it caught me by surprise. <laughs> Do you even, yeah. My, parent, my parents didn't even know what a pro contract was at the time, you know? Like, I was talking to a couple of Division One schools um, yeah. to like early, uh, early commit and all that stuff. But when the, the offer for the contract came, credit to my parents, they let me just take the contract. They said, you know what, don't worry about the school. Um, Put everything into play, being a pro and see where that takes you you know like don't worry about the school do that later if you have to that's so you're i was going to ask you next how supportive your parents are yeah. so obviously yeah, yeah, they've yeah. been supporting your soccer journey since 14 yeah, right beyond yeah, yeah way before way before way but before it was the, the whole goal was to get a scholarship and then when we realized like d1 was kind of not an issue yeah um getting a pro contract was something we never really thought of that early especially and then it kind of changed my whole life grade 10 going to school for maybe like an hour and then <laughs> going to go and train you know and basically doing, going to classes by myself, going to a private school, stuff yeah. like that. It kind of changed my whole life. And then my parents, they didn't ask me one question. You know, they said, just do whatever you want to do, be happy and Dude. put put everything into your dreams. So. That's huge, man. What's what's the biggest aspiration for you to achieve in soccer? Honestly, I just want to play at the highest level. That's yeah. my main goal, wherever it is, Europe, uh, North America, depending on how big the leagues get out here. Right. That's just my goal. I just want to play at the highest level and kind of just show that brown players can can play at the can highest level and not just not yeah. just division one or whatever it is. exactly i think so. the biggest thing is like you're showing we can compete on national stages yeah, right yeah yeah team canada stuff so i just want you to know this like i grew up playing soccer and i always wanted to like play soccer at a high level like yeah. someone like you so seeing you do it is dope and then seeing you get goals on the on that level is also like a, another another thing to experience right mm -hmm. you scored the first ever goal yeah. for the vancouver yeah, fc yeah. I, like did, did you feel some type of way did you even know when, it, when you did that? Yeah, I mean, the, t the team is brand new. Um, yeah. The whole club was talking about who's going to get the first goal, where are we going to get the first win, what minute yeah. the first goal going to be. And, and yeah, um, when it happened, I knew the first, my first initial thing was, okay, I never really had pressure. I, I'm, a, I'm a forward, so I'm supposed to score. Yeah, exactly. So I felt like maybe I'll, I know I'll get my chance. I just got to be ready to finish it. And when I did, uh, my first instinct was, you know, we'll celebrate with the team. And, you know, it's, it's an histor historic exactly. moment. And, yeah, it was nice to have it, especially being one of the only... I think the only Indian player to score in this league. So it's crazy, oh, yeah. dude. Now you have two goals in three games, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you could have a perfect season, like what would that look like for you with the team? Fifteen plus goals. Fifteen plus um, goals. I know. Yeah. I know. Last year, the Golden Boot uh, of this year was thirteen goals. Okay. So I think if I get fifteen goals, that'll put me in a good spot, being a leading scorer. And, okay. And hopefully, a, be a better move in my career. So. For the for the the young brown ballers, the young soccer players out there, like watching this and seeing you or following your journey, like what's the advice you have for them? I spoke about it earlier. I think it's just being focused. I mean, especially us being brown, you know, the communities we grow up in, it all matters. Your friends that you have all matters. And, yeah, and I know certainly. a lot of people say, choose your friends wisely. I, I agree, but I disagree. I, you can have friends from all, all over. And as long as you have the right head on you, you can, you can be around anyone, anywhere. And yeah. you just have one goal in your mind. You're, and the goal should be going pro. Making Absolutely. a name for yourself, making a name for your family. And if you have that your talent doesn't really matter. If you, if you work hard and you have that one goal in your head and nothing, nothing moves your, your mind, yeah. you'll be good, so. I love it, dude. Yeah. Uh, you played for the Canadian national team, I believe, two times. Yeah. Um, you also scored a couple goals for them. Mm -hmm. Is it a different feeling? Like, explain it to me, because, like, I love soccer, but, like, what's the, is there a different feeling of scoring for a pro team versus, like, 
the national team, like you know, because you represent yeah, the country. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is because the whole the whole country's watching you. So yeah. so when when you do score, it feels good. But part of, part of me does wish it was for India. You know, part of me does. Yo, wish I like that, that bro. You know, yeah, I, I love. love that. I love that my parents are from there, grew up there, a lot of roots there, and right. I want to see the brown community, you know, like thrive. So I, I want to represent India. Hopefully, they fix those the rules and regulations for it's that. It's tough but, right now. I know that. But let's, yeah. let's see what, what happens in the future. So. Yeah, absolutely. If you have obviously more opportunities to represent Team Canada, is is that something like you you want to be pursuing, or does that take away from no the, the mean, pro journey? Ca Canada gave me everything I have. You know, gave everything my parents have. Of course, I have love for Canada and I love the country. Um, yeah, if the opportunity arises to play for the men's national team, I would love it because yeah. they're so competitive. They went to a World Cup, and it would be an honor to play for them. But um, if India op offers me a chance as well, you know, like that's something I'm. I'm it's intriguing and something I would, I would right. look forward to as well. So we talked about this a little bit before, but just for context for everyone listening, like how hard it actually is the jump from playing Vancouver FC or just playing any league and then trying to go to Europe and trying to get to the Premier League or yeah. a league like that. Yeah, I mean, it definitely is hard. It's not, it's not something easy and it's not something that can happen over a week, two weeks or a month. You, whoever wants to make that jump, including myself, has to know that it can take a, a whole season, it can take half a season, it can take three years, four years, doesn't matter. So, right. so I, I have some personal goals for this season and if I hit them, I think I have a good chance of going overseas, so. I love it, dude. Yeah. Um, you already gave like some advice and things like that, but we always gotta end the podcast off with either a quote or something that you're living by. So like, what, what's, what's something every day you wake up, you, maybe you say to yourself, it's a mantra, it's a quote that kind of gets you by every single day? Honestly, it's just speaking to my family. There's no, not, no, not, no quote. Um, I know my, my family just keeps my head straight, um, living away from home, get homesick yeah. and stuff. I just call my brothers, call my mom, dad, my grandma. That's huge. And that's, that's my motivation, you know, calling them and just speaking to them. Any, any wisdom they give, mostly my brother, he gives me a lot of wisdom. Anytime something, yeah. something's going wrong, something's going wrong in training or something, just fixes my head and I'm back in it again, so. Your family lives out here? No, Toronto. The Toronto, okay, yeah. so like, okay, so how often are they able to come to the games? They haven't come yet, um, so it's kind of it's kind of hard because they work and everything, and then my right. brother's in school and all that stuff, it's kind of hard, but I think they might be able to come out for one or two. Okay, one more thing I want to ask you too, because I'm sure people will be curious, like, obviously you're a pro soccer player, what's, what's a day-to-day -day kind of look like for you, like, because soccer player versus battle yeah. workouts are different, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I usually wake up around like 7.30, get a good breakfast in, leave the house around 8.15, and yeah. then um, report for training 9 a.m., 10.30 start. And depending on the day uh, of the week and when our game day is, different sessions, 10.30 to maybe 12.30 training on the field, a lift right after. Okay. And then I go home from like 1.45 1, to 2 on my home, and then I just try getting another lift in in the evening. So, so like normally two days? Yeah, two days, yeah. Two usually, days. Yeah. Last couple, I keep saying this last couple questions, like, who's your idol? Like, who, who's the role model for you, if there is one? My dad. Your dad? My dad, yeah. Coming from, coming from India with nothing um, and creating what he has right now and giving me a chance to play soccer oh, okay. without worrying about anything, you know, like. You know, it's it's so underrated how important that is. Yeah, Because, yeah. like I said, your parents allowed you to focus on this, exactly, your dream. Yeah, yeah. I, got nothing, your I got nothing to worry about, you know, I got to worry about is soccer. So. Shout out to the, your parents. Um, idol on, on the pitch, on the field. Growing right, up. Right, growing up was uh, Terry Henry. Yo, Terry, bro. When I he loved, used to play for France, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I loved watching him. But right now, Erling Haaland, the way he's just killing he's, the Because he's a beast, bro. Yeah, he's like yeah. a different soccer player altogether. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you could match up with any player in the world, side by side, would it be Erling? Would it be someone else? Yeah, Erling. Or Erling. Benzema. Yeah, both Benzema? Yeah. Benzema's nice, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever been to a World Cup? No, but I got to play against Argentina um, right before they won the World Cup. Before they went to... What? When I was at Inter Miami, we got to play oh, against shit. Argentina in a closed door friendly. Oh, you can see on my Instagram, yeah, I got pictures with Messi. I was playing against Di Maria. Oh, okay, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I mean, that was probably the the biggest highlight of my career so far. So, you know, dude, that's crazy. Yeah. What's so. what's that like? Obviously, it's like like I said, it's friendly, right? You're not trying to kill these guys yeah. and stuff, but like, what's that like being on the pitch with players it's like that? Crazy. I mean, I, we barely touch the ball because they're just a different level, but I mean, they're just <laughs> so crazy. clean, you know. Everything, everything. All the little details on the ball is what is what makes yeah. them great. You know, they don't mess up a pass, they don't mess up a touch, and that's what the next level looks like. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, dude, I won't take too much of time. I appreciate yeah. you coming on the Brown Ballers podcast. We got Sean. We're in you. We're in Vancouver right now. Hopefully, dude, we'll uh, we'll maybe see you next year. We'll collab on the soccer sure, tournament and kind of get you yeah, yeah. get you doing sure. some cool stuff with us. So yeah. until next time, make sure you guys follow his journey. He's doing a lot of amazing things.